Have you been involved in any business relationship with a friend or any person or any individual for a short period of time or for a definite period of time such that after the business there was a share of profit or a share of loss? Now this type of arrangement is what we normally refer to as joint venture. So this uh, class will be taking us to accounting for joint venture relationships or joint venture accounts. Joint venture is a temporal business relationship between two or more parties. Now these uh, parties must have agreed to carry out specific business transactions uh, for the profit making motive. What I'm trying to say is two people, two parties, three parties, four parties, as many as possible, can have an agreement to carry out a temporal business relationship, you know, over a defined period of time. It could be three months, it could be six months, it could be one year, or even over a year. But the idea is that it's a definite period that the business relationship must come to an end. So when you have two or more people coming together, or two parties coming together, for this type of arrangement, we refer to it as joint venture. Now, the venturers are the individuals involved in the joint venture relationship. Say, for instance, you and your friend. So, you refer to yourselves as co-venturers or joint venturers. Now, having established that there's a diff that uh, we have uh, individuals coming together to form a particular relationship for a definite period, <clears throat> joint venture could be confused for partnership. So we must understand that joint venture is not the same thing as partnership. So here we're able to you know, differentiate between joint venture and partnership briefly. The first one here we have joint venture uh, being operated over a specific period of time. Say for instance, uh, you have the relationship to last for six months or a year or two years. But partnership operates on a going consent base that is over a very long period of time. The next one is that joint venture can be operated without necessarily being ready. That is, you can you can operate your joint venture relationship, you know, without necessarily registering it as a business name. But a partnership is expected to be registered as a business name. Joint venture record may be centralized or decentralized. When I mean centralized, just like the way you record your normal businesses. But when you say decentralized, you have the venturers keeping their separate records and then at the end of the period, they come together and prepare a, what, a joint account. Now, uh, partnership only use, uh, only records based on centralized uh, 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 pattern. What I'm saying is that partnership being a business that operates on going concern will have to adopt a centralized approach to recording a transaction. But joint venture can either do centralized or decentralized. Now, accounting for joint ventures. I already explained that when we account for joint venture, we either do this decentralized record keeping or centralized record keeping. The, cent the decentralized record keeping, what it does is to what? Give the independence of record keeping to the venturers. That is, the venturers keep their separate records. If it is you and your friend, for instance, you keep your records. Incomes that are, are traceable to your name is recorded by you. Expenses traceable to your name is recorded by you. Your venture, as the, your co venture does the same as your friend does the same thing. If, for instance, you and your friend are in a what, joint venture business, you keep your record, she keeps her own records. So that is what we call decentralized record keeping. So at the end of the period, you bring your record, she brings her record, we now prepare a joint what, memorandum what, account. That is what we call decentralized record keeping. The venturers keep their separate records, and at the end of the period, they bring their records together to what, prepare a what, joint what, memorandum account. Now here is the joint venturers book. Like I said, uh, individual venturers, book showing transactions affecting it in joint venture with other. What I'm saying is, you know, each venturer keeps its what records, okay? I know, uh, and the transaction affecting it in terms of costs and incomes, okay? He keeps it, the other venturer also keeps it. 
this is what we are saying. So let's assume A, B, C, and X, Y, Z are in a joint venture. So we have book of A, B, C. So it's a joint venture with X, Y, Z. The debit side is the cost associated to A, B, C. The income associated to what? A, B, C. Then we have book of X, Y, Z. Joint venture with what? A, B, C. So debit side cost associated to what? X, Y, Z. Credit side income associated to what? X, Y, Z. So basically what I'm saying is that in each venturer's book, you keep records that are traceable to you. Spends that you've made, incomes that came to you. The other venturer does the same thing. That's the essence. Now, the memorandum joint venture account or joint venture memorandum account is the combined income statement of the venturers. Here, you bring the venturer's records and then you prepare a combined what? income statement that combined profit and loss that shows the profit or loss you know of the joint venture business that is to be shared among the venturers so this is what, this is what we're talking about so we have a b c and x y z memorandum joint venture account so we have the what debit the cost all the costs both venturers credit all the incomes both venturers so at the end you identify the profit or the loss and share accordingly now here is an illustration. Awefa and Ayaba entered into a joint venture to sell bags, which were bought for 300,000 by Awefa by check on 1st April 2018. The terms of the venture are as follows. Profit and loss should be shared in the ratio two to one. That means the first person here is two, the second person here is one. Awefa should be paid 10,000 for his what service in, in purchasing the bags. However, it should also be paid 10% per annum on the cost of purchasing the bags. Any unsold bag as at 1st July should be taken by Ayaba at the cost less 1%. 150 bags were sold by Awefa at 5,000 Naira per bag. 100 bags were sold by Ayaba at 5,500 Naira per bag. Awefa paid transport of 5,500 Naira to deliver the bag sold by her. Ayaba also paid transport of 3,500 to deliver the bag sold by her. Three bags were unsold and taken over by Ayaba as what agreed. Prepared the necessary account using the decentralized what approach. Now, I already explained that in the decentralized approach, what you do is to what record the venturers transaction. That is, the venturers record their individual transaction, and then at the end of the day, what they prepare what a joint memorandum what account. So, what do we do? We have the book of our wafer in joint venture with what Ayaba. So what are the costs associated to what Awefa debit side? What are the income associated to what Awefa credit side? So let's go. The first one here, purchase of bags. He purchased bag 300,000. That's the cost associated to what Awefa. Then Awefa should be paid 10,000 naira for his service in purchasing bags. That's the service fee, 10,000. Then, uh, we have another one here. How if I pay transport of 5,500 to deliver the bag sold? So we have um, transport, 5,500. Then we also have, um, we have, um, what was there? I can see. However, should also be paid 10% per annum on the cost of purchasing the bag. So we have cost of purchasing the bag to be 300,000, but it has been agreed that it should be paid 10%. So 10% of 300,000 is 30,000. Okay. And now they're saying the venture begins in April, ends in 31st July. So we have April, May, June, July, four months. So 10% of 300,000, then we now have 4 divided by 12 times what? The value. So 0 0.1 is 10% times 300,000 as 30,000. 4 divided by 12 times 30,000 as 10,000. That's the interest on the fund as agreed. Then we have the what? Sales. She also made some sales. She sold five, 150 bags. We are sold by Wifa at 5,000 per bag. So we have 5,000 as well. That's what? 750,000. Okay, so these are the costs of what however this as the what this is the income that is traceable to her. The next one is Ayaba. Ayaba here, what are the costs traceable to her? Let's go to the question. This is Awefa, this is Awefa. Okay, 
Ayaba paid transport of 3,005 to deliver the bag sold by her. So we have transport here, 3,005. She made sales. She sold 100 bags at 5,500 per bag. So we have 5,550,000. Then she took some bags, it's an income, because if she's taking it over, the assumption is that what? It was sold to her. Okay? Now they are saying that they are saying that what three bags we are on, we are unsold and taken over by her. So in the question we're not giving the cost per bag, so we have to figure it out. So what is the bags taking over? Cost of purchases here is three hundred thousand. All the bags because she spent her money to buy the bag, it was agreed that they pay her interest. At the question here. However, should be paid 10% per annum on the cost of purchasing the bag. So we have interest here. Okay? So what's the interest on the fund? 10,000. We've already done that for 10% of 300,000. Then we now have it multiplied by 4 divided by 12. 10,000. Okay? Then the service charge. They say should be paid service charge for the what? For the purchases. So the interpretation is that if she's not purchased, if she has not purchased the bag, then she would not have incurred, would, the vendor would not have, have incurred that service charge. So that service charge is part of the cost of purchasing the bag. So we add it. So 300,000 plus 10 plus 10, that's 320,000, that's the total cost of the bag. So how many bags did they sell? Remember, are we fast sold 150? I have sold 100, and then they now have three on so that means 253 bags. So cost per bag is 320,000 divided by 253. That's 1264.84. Now she's taking over three bags, less what? 1%. So one bag is 1264.84 multiplied by three. Okay? Then you now minus 0 0.1 times 123.84 times three from what you have here. What I'm saying is, first of all, multiply 1264.82 by 3. Whatever you get, look for 1% of it and then deduct. That all gives us 3415.02 here as the what? Cost of back taking over. So that is part of the sales here under Ayaba. Now we have identified the income that is traceable to Ayaba and the expense traceable to Ayaba. But we don't know the profit that has been shared. Now, here is the memorandum joint venture account, Awefa and Ayaba. So, here you have the credit taking all the incomes from both of them. Then you have debit taking all the costs from both of them. So, we already have the purchase of bags. If you look at all um, Awefa's costs, purchase of bag 300,000, service fee 10,000, interest 10,000, transport 5,500. That's all the cost by. Uh, way far you can come and check it out here look at all the cost and then we have all the cost by ayaba transport i think just transport <clears throat> 3005 now all the incomes sales 500 times 150 750 that's for a wafer 500 times 100 that is for what ayaba 550,000. and the bag sales of bag taking 3415 so when you add all the income and take out all the costs, you'll be having 974415 as the profit to be shared. So you now share it in the ratio 2 to 3 as agreed. Look at it here. Profit and loss should be shared in the ratio 2 towards 1. Okay? So let's go. So the first share of profit here, which is for who? For a wafer. So we have a wafer share of profit. It will be 2 divided by 3. This 3 is 2 plus 1 because it's ratio 2 to 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. So 2 divided by 3 times 9, 7, 4, 4, 1, 5. You have 6, 4, 9, 6, 10. 1 divided by 3 nine times 9, 7, 4, 4, 1, 5. You have 3, 2, 4, 8, 0, oh, 5. So basically, if you add this to this, you have 974415. That's the profit of the venture. 
the profit of the venture is the total income minus the total expense. So this share of profit now goes to who? It goes to a way fast uh, book. So we come here. You can see share of profit now. This is for a wafer six four nine six ten. So if you add everything in the debit side, it is higher than the income by two two five one one zero. So it means that what Ayaba, we have to what pay a wafer two two five one one zero because the cost of a wafer is higher than its what income. So it needs to be balanced by who the other venture, which is a wafer. So we go to Ayaba's book now. Look at Ayaba now. This is his own, this is our own share of profit. One over three times nine seven four four one five three two four eight zero five. So if you add the total income here, it's higher than the total cost there by two two five one one zero. So Ayaba has to transfer to a wafer. So that's why you have check transfer to a wafer here two two five one one zero. So at the end of the day, the transfer balance in each venturer's account has to agree. As you can see here, the transfer balance in Ayaba's account 225 must be equal to the transfer balance of what? Ayaba here, 225. Now, the next method here is the word centralized record keeping. When we say centralized, we are keeping the record as though the business is going to exist for a long period of time. So we are adopting our usual way of recording, like using the double entry principle and record keeping processes. So we identify transaction, enter them in their respective ledgers or books, prepare trial balance if possible, or do the final account directly. So at the end of the day, the profit is ascertained with the word profit and loss accounts, and then we share it among the partners or the venturers rather, and then we dissolve the word, the relationship. So basically the centralized record keeping adopts a going concern method record the transaction of the venture, share the profit or loss among the venturers, and then what? Dissolve the what? Relationship. Now, quickly, we have change of interest in joint venture. What we mean here is that there's already an existing joint venture agreement, but in the process, the venturers agreed to what? Make some changes in the existing agreement. So it could be change in profit sharing ratio, it could be admission of new venturer, it could be review of capital contributor, it could be exit of an, uh, of an existing venturer or retirement. Now where this happens, uh, the first agreement has to come to an end by dissolving the first venture and then beginning uh, the next uh, venture based on the new agreement. So basically this is just for an understanding uh, this course of study uh, would not uh, treat, you know, illustration on change of interest. It's the same thing. What you're doing is you're dissolving the first agreement and then incorporating the new agreement. Okay? So, this is just for the note br uh, briefly. Okay? Like I said, uh, the joint venture has uh, other uh aspect especially where you're bringing in you know you're using or you're, 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 you're reporting or recognizing entities basic entities uh, in joint venture like i said uh you should refer to your ias 31 that will help us with joint venture involving entities because in there we should also be looking at proportionate consolidation, proportional consolidation, we'll be looking at, you know, joint control of resources, like uh, joint control of assets, joint control of entities, joint control of uh, operations, okay? This is basically where you have entities uh, involved in joint venture agreement. So this is just for you. You, you can read this on your own, okay, uh, for your know. For, for this course of study, we're not looking at that, but, you know, you can do that reading on your own but you know we are still making plans after uh concluding this volume uh we are looking at the next volume and that in that next volume we'll be looking at uh treating uh reporting standards there we'll look at all these 
standards, international accounting standards, international reporting standards, look at them one after the other. So for this very one, you can just uh, pick up the IS31, as I said, it's on joint ventures. So you can uh, read that on your own. Now here is the same question, but we are using a centralized approach that's using a double entry. We already know double entry, how to record double entry transactions. So if you have issue with double entry, go back to our double entry class, okay, and get yourself familiarized with it. So we are just applying the same thing here. Okay, so basically we have Awefa and Ayaba enter the joint venture to sell bars, which were bought for 300000 by Awefa by check. So Awefa spent money, okay, for the business. So that's like capital that Awefa brought into the venture. So we are going to credit one account and debit the other. So basically the capital here is Awefa's capital. So he purchased, she purchased the bag, 300,000. So we're crediting Awefa here. And then we're debiting purchases here, 300,000. Remember, the purchases will go to where? Trading profit and loss account, 300,000. Then we paid ten thousand dollar service fee, so we have the service fee here. Credit high again because she's the one, you know, bringing that into the business as capital. So credit capital for Awefa, with debit service fee here, ten thousand is going to where trading profit and loss account. The next one is the interest, interest on the um, the capital as a loan. 10 percent when we already know how to calculate that 0 0.1 times 300,000 for four months so we have a 10,000 credit to our account and then what would we do we go to the service fee it's rather the interest account there so this is the interest account here capital we for 10,000 transfer to what p and l to credit there um, we have 150 bags were sold by Awefa, 500,000 per bag. So what do we have? We have sales. Sales, yes, yeah, 750,000. Okay. And then we also have another sales, yeah, 550,000. Remember, the one sold by Ayaba, 550 bags by 100. Then we now have... The bag taking over. You now we got this 3415. Is it here? I'm explaining the bag taking over. We have all the cost. Cost of purchases, interest 10,000, service charge 10,000. Total cost of bag is adding everything 320,000. So cost per bag is 320 times 253. That's 1264.84. To take over, we have 1264.84 times 3, then minus 1%. You know, of the cost, which is 341. Find out you have it as a sales. So you transfer all the sales to where? Trading profit and loss account. And remember, bank is credited with all the total amount too as the sales. So there's a transport paid for. A wafer paid for transport of 5,500. 5, That's what you have here. Look at it. Credit away for 5,500, debit transport, 5,500. Okay, I have to pay for transport, 3,005. You have 35 here, can you see? So the total amount here goes to where? P and L. So this is the trading profit and loss. Sales, 130315. Cost of goods, so that's purchase is there, 300,000. If you minus this from this, you have 103. Uh, four and five. So that is so that's it. So this is the gross profit sales minus cost of sales one zero zero three four one five. So you less your total expense. We've already done trading profit and loss account. So it's the same thing. What are the expense? Transport nine thousand. You can have it there. That way you have it. Interest on phone ten thousand. You know how we got that. Then the service fee ten thousand. Total here is 29,000. Minus from this, you have 974,415. That's the net profit. So you're going to share the net profit between what? The venture. So here we have the appropriation or profit sharing account. So net profit brought forward, 974,415. So our wafer share is, our wafer share is 
or two over three times two over three times nine seven four four one five that's the profit here so we're showing between both of them then i have a share is one over three times nine seven four four so we have six four nine six ten three two four eight oh five now the bank account <clears throat> remember we made sales one three zero three four one five so we have to pay uh the ventures their profit as you can see our first share of profit is what six four nine six one ten so if you bring the profit to what are we know we've already invested an amount of money she brought in three hundred thousand brought in service fee took interest took transport and now her share of profit is what six four nine six ten so if you add everything together, this is what we're going to give her from the bank account, 975110. Now what you have here, a wafer, 975110. If you come to uh, Ayaba's account, she brought in 3,500 naira. Her share of profit is 324805. If you add together, you have 328305. So that is what we're going to give her. So as you can see, the total sharing is equal to the total amount in the what bank account. So basically, uh, in this class of joint venture, we have been able to use illustration to explain recording transactions of a joint venture using the uh, decentralized method and the centralized method. The centralized method is just like a normal double entry, you know, bookkeeping, and then your normal trading account and profit and loss account. But the, uh, the, the decentralized method, we have the Venturers book, and then we bring it together to prepare the uh, memorandum joint venture account. So go through uh, it again, and then if you have questions, you can reach me on 0813650636, or send me an email, jeremiah.dosu at gmail.com, or drop questions in the comment section, I'll be there to reply with the right answers.